change my button. The good thing is, the good thing is, Robert could do it at home. I don't have to go to the hospital. When I had the GJ, though, I constantly had to go to the hospital. It's important to change your tube. It's every two to three months. But if you have a problem like we did here, then it's just easier to change. You can change the G tube at home. Now, if you have this as a button for J tube, I have friends that change their own button. But then I also have friends that go to radiology that does it. every tube change. You want to check the balloon and make sure that it doesn't have any leaks and that it's not faulty. This is a very important step that many people forget to do. You can see Robert putting the Neosporin and caking it all around the tube on each side because you want to have it lubed up. I'm taking the extension off because the weight on the side is just too much. This is just showing you how to lock and unlock, connect, reconnect, and the black line needs to go up to where the balloon is to be going the same way and then you turn it halfway. The next step is that you have to get a balloon syringe and pull the water out if there's water. On mine here it had no water because it was just it had a slow leak in it. So you see me pulling it back there's no fluid in it when there normally would be. For this type of tube which is a mini one I'm going to use it for a G tube, but you can also use it for a J tube button. You want to have between 2 to 4 ml in it. For me, it fluctuates based on like the gas and stuff in my stomach. Make sure to use distilled water for the water in the balloon. It's very important. But it's nice to have a new one. This is the old one. So it gets all nasty from being inside your stomach. All the white stuff is cream. You want to cake cream on. This is it's new. This is Neosporine. One for pain and scar. I like using this better than Vaseline. Do not want to leave your extensions dangling. You need to have them stable where they're not moving. Otherwise, you get granulation tissue and your stoma will get a rash and it will bleed. You may think that's excessive, but you have to do that in order for your stoma to be healthy. And I'd rather take cream on and have a beautiful stoma. Like you guys, if you look at my stoma, we swapped it out. I had no redness or anything whatsoever. So I became allergic to, to the pads and the gauze. So the mesh that you get with a pick line, like, like this mesh I get in that size to hold in my IV, that's what um, Robert figured out that we could use that holds the moisture. Because your soma needs to be moisturized. It has 
be in a wet environment. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that nobody really knows. And they almost died from this feeding tube infection and left nasty hole. I'll never forget that. If we just knew what we knew now though, it wouldn't have happened. Robert cut a slit in the mesh. You have to pick your poison here. Bad feeding tube infection and die possibly? Or take it with a lot of cream and find ways outside the box to do it. If you have a question on feeding tubes or IVs, please drop it in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.